All right, y'all, let's talk about your sphere practice. And your sphere practice will look something like this when you are complete. And you're going to use these as a reference for the sphere practice. In order to do it, you will also need a small piece of drawing paper, um, the water-soluble graphite sticks, you need a little cup of water and a watercolor paintbrush. You will also need a circle template like this, and we're going to be using the largest size in the circle template. So let's get started. I'm going to select a 2B graphite stick. Remember, they have different numbers on them, and this one is a 2B. You could use a darker one if you wanted. Um, you just need to make sure you don't push too hard. So our first step is to get the sphere the base of the sphere drawn in, so about the middle of the page, I'm going to just trace around to make my sphere. Okay, just pushing really lightly. Again, it was the biggest one, which is right here. And then approximately in the middle, I'm going to create the little ground, you know, the line in the background to create the ground. So I'm just using the template itself as a straight edge because it doesn't have to be precise. Okay, so now I have my base spot and I need to now start laying in the ground and we'll use the different um, graphite sticks to do this. So what I will do is to start by adding in the darkness around the outside here. And I'm just using the 2B, but you can do this with the 6B. I wouldn't recommend doing it with the 9B, though. You can add the 9B in at the end, but I wouldn't start with it. So it's pretty dark around the outside. So I'm going to go around the outsides and just carefully use the graphite on its side to add in the tone. Just like this. Okay, so I'm around about the outside just a bit, just like that. And then next I'm going to do the same thing where I can see that it's dark and I've got my sphere really close. It's just right over here to my left. It's just off camera. And so I'm checking it and making sure that I carefully don't get outside the lines. I need to draw in the shadow. Like that. And then the floor area is a little, I need want it to go all the way over to the shadow line. Actually, I don't want it to have a dark line. So the floor area is a little bit lighter, but it does have tone on it. So I'm going to just lightly add in some tone. Okay. Really light around here, just kind of skipping around. If I get it, you know, say I get like a weird little part, I can always use my eraser to clean it up a little bit. So I got it a little outside the thing here. So while it's still dry, you can definitely erase into it. And say I wanted this to just naturally be a little bit lighter. You know, I can lighten it up that way. And then I'm going to take the 6B and make it a little bit darker throughout here right where I can see the great darkness in the sphere itself. And do 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 like that. And then I'm going to make it darker underneath. Again, being very careful where the edge needs to stay crisp so that it doesn't bleed into my sphere. So I'm going to want it to be a little bit darker in there. So I've used the 6B now. And then I'm going to do the same kind of thing on the outside around here. There we go. And then 
I'm coming over here to do this. All right, so I'm getting into the edges in the corner, and then it looks like in the reference there's a little darkness in the corner here, and there's a little darkness right next to the sphere over there. Okay, and it's darker going down here. Okay, so I'm still trying to match my tones, but you can see overall I'm not <laughs> I'm not putting it on really, really um, finely. I do want to have a gradual, like a gradual change in value, so I'm still trying to make it relatively neat, but this is not my neatest. And now for the fun of the water soluble graphite. Using water and a brush, you will paint on your practice. So I'm going to just add water. And you can see how it goes together like this. Now I want it to be sort of soupy, but not really soupy poopy. I don't want it to dry before I'm able to get it to come out. This is like the graduated wash that we were doing when we did the watercolor unit. So let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So now I've gotten the graphite wet in the background and now just using progressive amounts of water, I'm bringing it closer to the sphere. Now I'm going to be really careful when I get up near the sphere because I don't want it to get wet. All right, so check it out. There it goes, just like this. Okay, now I'm going to go into the other side. Again, I don't want to let that dry because I'll end up with a funny edge. Now the funny edge can look pretty cool, but I want to make sure that I only have a funny edge if that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, so I'm just paint down, lift up, trying to keep it so that it's light in the center and dark around the outsides. Just like that. Okay, so that's essentially what you're going to do to get all of it um, painted in. Now I did the top part, but I don't want to do the bottom part yet because they'll bleed together and I don't want to do um, the sphere yet again for the same reason. Although this side, I might be about ready to do that. Um, so you get it, you have to paint it in stages so that they don't bleed together and that will be the same for when you're working on your project and you want to get different areas. You'll use this for the background and for some of the tones and then you're going to go back in and draw into it. So this side's probably dry enough for me to do this. And you'll notice that the water soluble graphite it bleeds together pretty well when you get it wet but it doesn't it won't solve all of your problems. So if you lay it on really, really messily or you push very hard, it won't fix that. So you have to still do a decent job when you're applying it um, and make sure you're paying attention to tones and you can't just kind of color it in, right? So you have to be really careful with it. But it can create these really pretty kind of washes and it can get you these really beautiful black, black, blacks, which is so nice for your drawings. And be careful that you don't do what I just did there. I'm gonna give that little puddle a chance to dry before I get into it. Okay. You see how I'm avoiding the little shadow because where I didn't avoid the shadow, it's bleeding out. Okay, so then I'm just gonna kind of come around here. All right, so I would need to let that dry a little bit before I paint it into it, because remember you can't paint wet into wet unless you want them to fuzz out and bleed together real bad. So 
you can see the one that I have finished. I painted in a couple of stages. I painted and let it dry, and then I painted this, and then I let it dry. I did the sphere and then the ball, the shadow, and let it dry, and then I did the bottom. And then after I did that, I went back in with my graphite sticks and pencils, and I drew in some of the details and some of the values, so I was able to layer it on top. Now, for your project, we're going to use a sturdier paper so that it doesn't curl up as much, but I didn't have quite enough for us to practice on the same thing, so these get kind of like plumpy, but that's okay, it'll be all right for your project. So when you're done and it looks something like this and it's dry, you're going to um, tape it inside of your sketchbook. Thanks, y'all.